Hey everybody, this is Chelsea Schaefer and Caitlin Dustoff, and this is The Score, the official podcast of the sport of team roping. This is the Team Roping Journal's semi-weekly podcast, highlighting the team roping industry's top talents and influencers through stories that inspire and connect ropers. We sit down with ropers from the professional ranks, as well as industry icons and producers to delve into topics that make the team roping world tick. This is season two. It will feature even deeper interviews, storytelling, and issue-based coverage, and we are so excited you're here. Junior Nagara is coming into the 2019 Wrangler National Finals Rodeo as the number one healer in the PRCA World Standings, roping again this year with Caleb Driggers. This will mark his sixth appearance in the Thomas and Mac since his explosion onto the U.S. roping scene from Brazil, complete with that infamous pullback. Some things have changed since the first year. He's a newlywed, he's on the brink of fatherhood, and his English is pretty darn flawless. But his giddy personality, his priority of family over all else, and his hunt for a healing gold buckle have remained constant. Junior and I sat down just two days before the start of round one, immediately after he and the rest of the ropers got to run through the hill rodeo cattle steers in the arena. So here is Junior Nagara on this special episode of The Score, brought to you by CSI Saddle Pads. Oh, and look for a commercial for CSI telling you all about them at the middle of the episode. Hi, Junior. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. You guys, Great. You guys just broke in steers. Tell me, how did the steers feel this year at the NFR? What do you think? I think they're really good. They just take great, and um, we were good to rope them over there back in Texas. And I think Bobby Joe did a good job sorting them like the past two years, and uh, I think this this set is a little bit smaller than it used to be. Some of them are still going to try and run a little bit, but I think it's going to happen. We did a good job. Just get them caught a couple of times, make sure they hop good, live good. I think it's going to be a pretty good team rope and watching at the end of our this year. So you rode two horses breaking in steers. You rode uh, Green, Green Card and, and Timon. Timon. What did you do? You know which one I you're I don't know start? yet. Well, I still don't really know which am I going to start on it because uh, I know Green Card so well. The last, you know, probably four or five years I rode him right here. And uh, it's been, I have been so successful on him. But Timon done really good this year over the summer and he's a really good horse. Just uh, has a little bit more confidence on Green Card, but I think Timon, he step up. And if he do what he has done through this year, he's going to be really good too. Now, this is your how many how many consecutive NFRs is this? It's number six. Number six. Mm-hmm. Dream come true, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, how have you changed <laughs> since your first NFR? Well, that's a lot of change, and it is still is a blessing just to be here. You know, it could be. Tiesto do a good job. Way okay? worse. <laughs> <laughs> I did a podcast in the airport with him, just talking to him. Well, we should have recorded it. Stuff like that. Do we <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clay Tryon. Six. So six years ago, when you came to your first NFR, would you have joked around with Clay Tryon? A little bit, not a lot. <laughs> kind of like taught him a little bit how to be more happy and fun. <laughs> We've become good friends now. I really like him. Yeah, a great guy, and then amazing thing for the industry of roping and amazing hatter, one of the best ever. And it's cool. We've been roping a little bit back home right now, and. Well, my new place not too far from his house. I just say sometimes just crossing the gas station up there and he just mess with me. Say hey, it's my town. I say not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's good. It's been good. But back on the story, uh, this is my number six. It's my sixth year here, and first year was it was a blessing, you know. So, I think for every roper, is a is a dream to make the NFR, no matter where you're from, from America. And, even mm-hmm. from Brazil and other countries, just dream. You grow up just watching NFRs, two rope and cap rope and the whole rodeo. That's pretty much the way we rope back home. Because today everything's changed, but back in the day, we only get to watch the old tapes and stuff. And everything they recorded, and we have access over there as the mm-hmm. NFR. So everybody thinks we just go fast every time. <laughs> That's why everybody just reaches and throws fast, that kind of. What kind of barrier? Did you guys have it home? Oh, now they change. Now they just follow us. Everything mm-hmm. seems to have word series, a regular barrier. They doing a lot of word series back home now. Mm-hmm. It's like here. 
But back in the day, they used to have a rope barrier when I was little. You had rope barrier, neck rope, and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, um, so the first year you came here, it was a pretty crazy trajectory to getting to the finals. Um, how long, how long were you here in the U.S. before you realized that, that the finals was a real goal, that it was really going to happen? Actually, well, the dream, you know, the goal to make the NFR actually since I was little has mm-hmm. always been to be, you know, learn how to rope, be a better rider, roper, and just one day try to make the NFR, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but then when God put everything together and, uh, you know, end up, Matt and Jay, true great friends. That's just, that was mm-hmm. a God thing. No matter what you say, I don't care what you believe or not. But the way it happened, you know, it's no. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then uh, we start rodeoing, and then we start doing good. In the when you get close to September, I had a good chance. Actually, Jake was saved. You know, he already mm-hmm. had. But in the beginning. Because I didn't have my social or, or my social, you know, or my, mm-hmm. my tax ID or something like that. Because uh, we went to, let me see, Denver qualifier. Mm-hmm. And we placed, we did good. And the next day I called and bought my card. Jake did it, you know. and uh, But he never counted my money. So I lost 11000 Jake has 11000 more than I did. And any season, in regular season, if you don't have mm-hmm. 11000 count on, you know. And your standing hurts you bad because in the end, every dollar, hundred dollar, make a huge difference. Mm-hmm. A couple hundred dollars, a thousand. So then we get, I, we got really close to make it, and you know I see we well, kind of get a little scared. Has a chance to make it, and but us, but God is so good. You know I run out of horsepower, just have one little horse. My horse got sore, I couldn't run anymore. And the uh, Cole let me ride his horse. During the year, Mr. Allen let me ride his horse a lot. And uh, Jay, Jay just let me, he had an extra horse, let me ride in the last five rodeos, just helped me a lot. You know, everybody else just to, you know, get a passion for me and just help me out to make it. And then that was really, really good. And I need to thank them for, for everything. They've done it. And uh, when I get here, to well, I, I made it for you, you know, it's yeah. true. And, and that was a good finals. I didn't do the best I could have, but we did good. We won yeah, second on the average. Good, we did yeah. really good. Placed in a couple mm-hmm. rounds, then won around, and, and we did good. Now, tell me, uh, this is one of my favorite questions, and I kind of ask it to everybody. Take me into your arena growing up as a kid. What did the arena look like? What did the cattle look like? What kind of horses were you riding? Who was yelling at you? Who was helping you? <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah, well... Back in the day, we rode muleys, you know, no horn steers. So, and uh, when I decided to become a professional roper, that's what I'm doing because I was just play a little bit like kid, play soccer a little bit. And soccer is huge in Brazil. Are you good at soccer? Ah, oh, no, really, but I'm, I was good uh, goalkeeper, you mm-hmm. know, hands, and I was really tall, and mm-hmm. everybody thought, and I like it too. Mm-hmm. We played all the time, and not very good running you know mm-hmm. we just stay out there and just protect the goal was, I was good mm-hmm. and I had a chance to just try to go pro because mm-hmm. I was really tall and everybody thought it would be like six five and just so fast because mm-hmm. I grew up you know faster than everybody mm-hmm. but I kind of just got stuck but then I decided to to just I'm, I'm gonna be a professional that's a, what am I gonna do I'm going to rope and try to be the best I can and uh, my mom my mom is she's the one always been with me and helped me and watched me since the first day. And How was, old were you when your dad died? I was, I was five, coming six. Gotcha. Yeah, so was little, very little, early. Very yeah. Little, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I stayed with mom and uh, and actually she roped too and I was able to start healing for her a little bit. But I was I was very into it. You know, I love it a little bit. Like it. Just go rope a little bit and then like a kid, mm-hmm. you know, just go back, play soccer, rope again. Just for a time I want to be a bull rider my mom hates and I try to be a bull rider <laughs> are there videos? <laughs> no I hope thanks God not <laughs> but I wasn't I wasn't bad too I was decent but when I start riding the big ones and I got hurt one day bad and I said no I'm not doing that anymore so and uh but when we moved to a place we we still own back there and uh we moved to the ranch and then uh we have some stalls and had arena mom make arena and uh, I remember I just rope all the time and 
She what was the me. arena made out of? Was it panel? That's a, that's a, no, it's not panel. It's just like a, a post, like T post here, but not T post. Like a, it's like maybe wood post, mm-hmm. not two, and sleek wire. That's pretty much all we got. And big old shoes, like mm-hmm. metal shoes. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, every time I had a break or I couldn't rope, I had, a, I had a, two horses, a little pony. Actually, I had a little square. And uh, I would ride him. It was like my probably my first horse. Mm-hmm. His small pony. But I had like two calves. I just I was a little square. I put him out there and they just slope and circle and then they give me a light turn out heal him. And mm-hmm. I just pin them. I just <laughs> run the circle all day. And my mom, my grandpa has to come back and say, Hey, it's already dark. Let's go home. Leave the horse alone and calf alone. Mm-hmm. And it, I remember doing that. And uh, my mom she was she was she was a she was a great mom. She was the same one. She just uh, She's a she's out there for you. She has the biggest heart ever, and same time she's like a tougher than a dad. She just yeah. strong, and then you being know she get on her being. It's hard to be, you know. Kind of yeah. now, I kind of understand now. Mm-hmm. You know, have to if you just pat it too much and just be a nice mom, it wouldn't work. So mm-hmm. she didn't have no dad. She has to be tough too, and she was. Mm-hmm. And I remember, remember myself. One of the things that I start roping. And say, you want a rope? I'll turn in some steers. I have to go over there and set all the horses. I was little, like 13, 12 mm-hmm. years old, you know. Go get the horses. It's hard to settle. You know, settle so heavy. Set them all. Go get the steers. I, was, I, I remember I settled three head horses and three horses and get all the steers, pin them, have them, everything ready. Mm-hmm. Have her, hope, her rope and the saddle horn glove. And she'll come and look around. And, uh, and she you knows pretty good. She mm-hmm. is too. Really good. Catch a lot. <laughs> Never miss. So then she goes up there, rope one, I'll come, miss. She just turn around more, I'll go over there, follow, follow, miss. <laughs> and she just, I remember she back in the box. It's not even one time, that's a lot of, a couple of times. She said, well, okay, I'm going to rope the steer. I'm going to turn him. You can follow him how long you want, here to the water, whatever. <laughs> but when you let your rope go, you have to catch your feet. <laughs> it's okay, there uh-huh. we go. She goes up there, rope him. Turn him. I follow, fall, follow, follow <laughs> almost until the steer could even walk anymore. <laughs> Boom, let it go, miss. She just let the steer go, take the rope off, say, okay, guys, we're done for today. <laughs> and uh, I just cry. <laughs> just like, <laughs> get so mad. I used to hate my mom. I used to do that. <laughs> and this more than one time. She done it a few times. And I used to hate it. And now I understand. What know. made her such a cowgirl? Where does your mom's... Grandpa. She was a really close to my... My grandpa, was, he was a cowboy. Mm-hmm. He was, you know, buy, trade a bunch of cattle, and he was a cowboy. We What's rope the Portuguese the word for cowboy? They call a cowboy, they call a cowboy, but it would be like a peon or vaquero. He was a peon. Mm-hmm. He, was a, he was a good one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I grew up with him, too. He mm-hmm. helped a lot, too, you know. Mm-hmm. Is he still around? No, he not. He's uh, he passed away in 2016. But did he ever get to come watch you here? No, never. no. That's mm. like remember 2016. I was hurt too. Mm-hmm. And then he, he found out I had a cancer, and then he passed away. And I have my my whole process going on. I couldn't go mm-hmm. see him. Nobody out of the country. It was it was pretty rough. But I know he's in a better place, and pretty soon we're gonna be out together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. You're, can you talk about where you are in your immigration process? Is it top secret or is no, it? No, it is not. It's good. It's, good. it's yeah. good. I got my green card two years ago and um, now I'm just waiting. And a couple more years, if probably after three or four more years, I can reply for citizenship if I want to stay. But it's all good. Do you want to stay or do you want to go home? No, I don't know what God wants for me. I love here. I love this country, you know. Not because I just do and been so good to me, but it is best country in the whole world for whatever you do sport you know so safe and mm-hmm. it's i'm not saying i don't like brazil i do love brazil too mm-hmm. but for everything here the opportunity here is great and i need to be i am very very thankful for everything america has been given to me and not even for you know the the opportunities but just friends and people i'm mad and and that's it's been a blessing but like i said i don't know one day i can go home or whatever God wants me to do, because I miss home too, I miss going home. Yeah, what do you miss the most about home? Obviously your family, <sighs> your so family. Family is the most, I'm, you know, I'm really a family person, you know me, and I'm more emotional than all those guys, you know me, and I miss my family, friends, just 
it don't matter just where you come from you know it wasn't it was terrible just like your friend just mm-hmm. you know we're, it's different you know we live different way different and and we're really tired and uh, Brazilian people they're, they're great people has a huge heart you know they not going so much but they if you go out there they just take your time just to see you just hang out it's, it's more it's mm-hmm. more laid back like that but it's a good people but I, I miss the most is my family and and see my friends a little bit and just hang out with my family is the most important thing. CSI Saddle Pads. They're the ones bringing you this episode today, making this all possible. And they're the choice of our guest, Junior Nagara, for his elite equine athletes. They're made in the USA in the great state of Missouri. And every feature of the CSI Saddle Pad system is designed with your horse's comfort and performance in mind. The system works with all types of saddles, including traditional flex plate and treeless saddles. Not that I see a lot of team ropers out there riding in treeless saddles, but just so you know. At the heart of the CSI saddle system is a revolutionary CSI flex plate. First and foremost, this in-pad plate increases the contact area of the bars. This spreads the pressure of the saddle and the rider's weight out over a larger surface area, which in turn reduces or eliminates pinch and pressure points. Learn more and place an order at CSISaddlePads.com and look for them while you're in Las Vegas across the trade shows. Your family, you now have a family of your own here, soon to be. Yeah. What is the scariest thing to you about being a dad? I know. I never thought about that. I was so scared. But we got married. We're going to have a little girl. Even a little girl, mm-hmm. you know. I've been helping my mom with my sister. Been kind of a dad mm-hmm. for a while. But never been a real dad. And now... I know. I, I'm start thinking about it. You know, you're gonna be gonna so change, good at gonna, it. I don't know. Hope so, but a lot of things gonna change. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's already it already changed a lot. So and everything I do uh, before it is just think about me. And not, it's not, not I'm, I'm not saying I'm supposed to be selfish. Nothing. You know me. But now I just like see, man. I have my family. You know, my wife. And I have a little girl. And I don't know. Even Royo. I don't know, I was talking to Colin the other day. Yeah. I said, dude, man, I already miss my family. What about when you leave babies too? He said, he said man, you got to be tough to leave because they're mm-hmm. crying. They love you. They want you to stay. But, you know, God has plans. We're just praying for her can deliver very healthy and be a blessed girl. And just me and Jacqueline, we pray all the time. So, you know, God just teach us, teach us how to raise her right, you know. Mm-hmm. The Bible says just... Teach your child on the way, on God's way. You never just miss track. So mm-hmm. hope we just can do that. And I know if you do a good job, it doesn't matter. If you've done it, she'll never forget. So. And on the family topic, you were telling me that your sister is going to med school. Is yeah. going to become a doctor. <laughs> yeah. She and she's had a ton of medical. Ton of medical surgeries and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know her, my little sister. Mm-hmm. She was special. Mm-hmm. She was little people, a mm-hmm. And her legs was bothering her, and and uh, two years ago we find an amazing doctor. Actually, here in America, and we just fly around with my mom trying to find, you know, mm-hmm. uh, just something that would help her. Not that her size never bothered her, you know, and we're good at it too. She was a blessing and a gift from God, and uh, and uh, but she started having problems with her knees, and pretty soon she had to have the surgery, and it's very kind of complicated. We find a great doctor back home, and she done it, but it's really painful. She went through probably a year just rehab, mm-hmm. and just and she grows. She grew probably like a, oh, I think five, six inches. She grew a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and her legs are straighter now, and she's fine. And all the doctors want to keep doing more because she can do more surgery. She can become a, you know, mm-hmm. regular size people, normal people. And then she say, you know what? I'm happy like that. I need to take a little break. <laughs> so the, <laughs> and I don't mm-hmm. I don't blame her but she she started uh doing the medical school and uh, she loved it that's and amazing that's amazing yeah. mm-hmm. and I said see you all everything's for a reason and uh, she's doing it and uh, she just started that's why she can come yet mm-hmm. and she had some tasks to do back home and uh, but she's very happy yes and it's, it's it's all in God's time and everything's changed. Mm-hmm. We don't understand nothing. It's all mm-hmm. for a reason. Now, as far as Brazil, and I, I just could talk to you about Brazil all day because I've never been there mm-hmm. and I, I like to know about it. 
tell us about the team roping culture back there. We talked about what your arena was like and what the steers are, but like, is it growing? Is it is it a new market or a growing market that we should be paying attention to? It is. It is. Team roping is a huge deal. It's probably the second most popular event. You know, but it's been growing a lot. Like I left six years ago, and the kids. The, the guys just been dominate, kind of dominate their, you know, their numbers and become pros back home. Mm-hmm. I don't even have no idea who are they. I know them just to see, see who's that guy. And I talk to some old friends back home and say, well, they just young kids. When you left, they just start roping. And not because of me, but because, you know, the everything. Is in There's got to be so much, but because of you, though. Yeah, like, yeah. Do you I, feel I so too. like a responsibility to your country or? Yes. I don't think just my country is for everything. It's a lot of responsibility where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. And I feel like sometimes I need to do better. I need to be more strong. And like I said before, we had a couple of talks before. And when you do good, everybody's watching you. When you're not doing good, there are the same people watching you more, you know, mm-hmm. closely. So it's a learning deal and, and it is. Even you, it don't matter what you do, you're you're influenced to everybody. If we need to watch out because sometimes we get selfish, that's true. Mm-hmm. You know, you're in a light spot. So, and everybody sometimes just feel tired and sad and, you know, whatever you do. And just have somebody watching and somebody adore you. Or not saying adore you is the yeah. right way, but just like loves you or mm-hmm. your kid or a friend or whoever. Look up to you. So don't think you're... You're not good enough. Or, uh, it's hard to say because I'm going through a lot and it's not easy. But, but we got to have a lot of responsibility in whatever you do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. That's true. How, um, you're, I feel like you've been pretty private, though. With Jacqueline and with, with getting ready to have a family, you guys have kept it pretty on the down low. Yeah. We were planning, actually, was planning to have a kid next year, mm-hmm. and uh, I just bought a place, like I said, and uh, but we got married, and we have some paperwork going on for mm-hmm. her through mine, but she's, she was going to school, and she had her visa and everything right, mm-hmm. so what she had in the beginning, she had some complication, mm-hmm. and that's why we just kept, you know, kept on, yeah. yeah, she had mm-hmm. some few problems, but everything is going great, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's been a blessing. Now we can just share with everybody. And it's so exciting. Yeah, a couple yeah. more months. <laughs> baby be here. When's she do? She do the fe- February or March. Mm-hmm. Could be the 29th, February. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> living day, living day, yeah. But, yeah, I hope not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, now I want to talk about this year's NFR. You just told me the stairs are pretty good. Um, how do you feel, though, going into it? You were... Well, this it was a different year. It's kind of crazy year this yeah. year. Uh, I wrote, we wrote good. I don't think we wrote the best. I couldn't do it. I didn't. I don't think I wrote good enough. That's like the past years I wrote. I think I wrote better. I'm not saying I didn't mm-hmm. wrote good enough. Like everybody wrote great to be here. Everybody on their spot. And uh, but that was weird. You know, the number just add up, and uh, we went here and there a little bit here and there, and then. Uh, Coming in to, on the top again, uh, I'm not even thought about it. Could could do it this year, mm-hmm. you know. And everybody knows, just doesn't matter if you've been the 15 guy here. Have amazing fun because you can get out of here with the dog logo, no matter what. Yeah. Do you and Caleb talk about it? I mean, you've come in so well the last couple of years. Had a chance. I saw Caleb was riding Yahtzee in the mm-hmm. warm up. You were riding green card. Mm-hmm. I mean, what? What could be the difference maker? What, what's going to make the difference? Well, I don't know. Like, I think all the healers, they're all pretty tight. Like I said, that doesn't matter. Clay is just a little bit ahead. Caleb, he, you know, he had some change partners a little bit during the, the season. And he up great, too. And, uh, but Caleb did a really good job. Well, like I say, it's, it's, it's a lot of money, kind of look like, but it's one, two go around there. Yeah. Already, you know, it's ten head rodeo. Mm-hmm. And pay so much money, and I, I, I keep saying, like last year, it was awesome. I had a great year. It's a battle since the first one, always the mm-hmm. end. And I, I was happy. To let Paul, your buddy, years passed, and it was awesome. You know, it was fun. It was different. You know, I was glad. And they own it. They wrote amazing. And I think we did. We wrote good too. You know, we wrote really good last year. But I think it didn't mean to be like the past years too. I think last year was really good. 
So I, I think we need a rope one stir at a time. That's what I'm gonna try to do. And see if, if I do the best I can, it's be good enough. Mm-hmm. We can't get out of here in God's time with the gold buck or a few of them. If not, not we need to learn how to live with it. It's kind of hard, but everybody's here. They're prepared. And I was listening to Craig Fry and said, "I said everybody here think they're gonna do the best and they're gonna win the whole thing, money." And uh, not even that, you know, the gold buck was a dream for every cowboy, every roper, rider, no, no matter what. But, you know, uh, here is the one, the chance we got to compete against 15 guys, 14 team ropers. And not there, we have to run and against, compete against everybody. And, uh, and that's, here is, here, NFR, it is the place and the time where we just set up to go next year and, can clear some money and make some, you know. Does your gold buckle? Family. Does your gold buckle um, from 2016? 16. Does it? Does it feel like a gold buckle? Like, do you, th- or because it's not in the healing? Does I it- don't know. Like, uh, to be honest to you, mm-hmm. like I didn't had I didn't thought I had no chance to win it, and uh, we done down the end because we had a spot that year. Remember what? You know, a lot of guys just trying to, mm-hmm. and then the last. Two rodeos, I, I end up making enough money in the calf rope and to to be able to it like Kansas to City, Kansas right? Kansas City, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Kansas City, I split with Marcus, I think, or somebody. <laughs> split like, third and fourth. Did you hurt yourself in the process? I did, I did, I did, yeah. I did hurt myself. During the deal, I just have to practice really hard, mm-hmm. and I haven't roped calf for a long time, and then I just have to practice hard because I'm having trouble on the ground, you know, mm-hmm. just gathering and, and tying. And then I was just practicing really hard. And then right after, we went to Hempstead. I thought I was healing, but it wasn't, you mm-hmm. know, because I was just pulling the ground on the right side. And then I was healing the day I pulled my slack and the rodeo at the rope or whatever. And then I just hurt really, really bad right after. And I come in, hurt. I went to U.S. finals, and here it was, it was, it wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't rope really good at all. Because it's really, really painful. Couldn't stand up. I remember I had to you change just my whole discouraged style. that yeah. whole week. You were very discouraged. Bad. Yeah. Because uh, I would make a great turn, see the steer, and then I was about to let it go. I couldn't stand up, and then I would just be short. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just can't. But I couldn't get a leg. But, but you know what? After, after back on the, on the 2016, and I didn't talk, couldn't win it. And the numbers had like four guys ahead of me or three mm-hmm. guys and then we place on the round and win something on average for somehow the numbers add and end up winning it. you know I, I was good that was the year everybody like lost their ropes that's unbelievable just, name. Yeah. it's like mm-hmm. terrible like mm-hmm. everybody could want it and just like go oh, that was yeah. weird for everybody in every event so uh, they just I was going to the trailer just run out there and say hey Jimmy come over here you want it? I said, no, I think I'm a little bit short. I don't think we want it. And they said, no, no, you want the run, but we need to make sure. And they just brought me over here, and they just counted, counted, and then they just weighed, weighed calf rope or weighed everything. So finally, I said, well, yeah, I want it. You know, the gold buckle. For, I need to be very thankful because today I understand, you know, how precious is that buckle. Mm-hmm. All the real cowboys fight for it. Mm-hmm. You know, as a blessing just to have it, and and I, I did work pretty hard that year, and you wrote pretty good, team roping, and I didn't cap roping that much, mm-hmm. but it was tough. And today I really see how much they everybody has value on this buckle for a cowboy deal. But you know, my goal, my goal is be world champion healer. You know. Yeah. I, I'm thankful and I understand and it'd be for the hour on and I don't know if I can get another one. You know, it's not we probably can't get one healing but I don't know. You know, we can, can you probably trip steers? I never done it. We don't trip steers back no. home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just rope cast. Never bulldog too out of the horse. Just <laughs> I the wasn't ground. gonna ask if you bulldog. I mean <laughs> no. you could be a timed event uh, no. cowboy here. Cowboy. Lazy, go to the time event. Go to time event. I know they pay really well. It should does. Try. You should try. I want to try one year. Uh, well, I need to learn how to trip. Just catch too much necks in Brazil. We just go <laughs> no time. Just go straight to the neck. Yeah. <laughs> straight to a 60. Yeah. No thanks. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll love to. I think it's, it's, it's a really cool event. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I think we're going to enjoy watching you this week, and I hope it's everything you want it to be. I know. Yeah. I'm just, uh, me too.
Mm -hmm. He has one more little challenge ahead of us again, but see what God has prepared and see what can we can get it done. Perfect. I can't wait to talk to you throughout the week. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you again to CSI Saddle Pads for presenting this episode, the special Rope Vegas episode of The Score with Juni Nagera. Remember, check out CSISaddlePads.com to order your pad. Check them out in Las Vegas. You have, there's a 30-day ride it and try it guarantee. You can ride it. You can get it dirty. If you don't like it within 30 days, you can send it back for a refund. Remember, CSXSaddlePads.com, and thank you all for listening today. <laughs>